from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, welcome. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Bread Broadcast, where the Gospel is preached concerning, salvation by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. A sanctified Christian daily living through the power of the Holy Spirit. And an assured eternal glory for the saved, but eternal condemnation for the lost. Here to bring today's bread broadcast is Josephine Zion Taylor. Our topic for today is humans and our races. Humans and our races. Our short reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 12 through to 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verses 12 through to 18. And our case study is King Solomon. Let's pray. Dear Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. We thank you. We praise you for bringing us together again. Oh, Father, as your word will be going out, let it go out with your authority, with your power. Let it bless lives. Let lives be changed. And let eyes be opened. And let hearts be turned to you. Oh, blessed Holy Spirit, glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by the souls that will be counted into the kingdom of God as a result of this lesson. For in Jesus' name, I will be prayed. Amen and amen. Our foundation text is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, this is the Lord Jesus speaking now, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What are the races run by humans? It is, number one, the ruinous race. Please track with me. Every one of us is concerned with this message. Seriously. As long as you are a human being, you are going to find something to get out of this message. All right? Number one is the ruinous race. Solomon starts out as a God-loving, God-seeking leader who looks up to God for divine leadership. However, a time came that Solomon became a prodigal when he turned from serving the living God and began to run a ruinous race by following his harem of wives into idol worship. Anyone, please listen, who fails to recognize the supremacy of the God of the Bible as the sole author and director of their life is running in this kind of race. Whoever lives independently of God Having God in none of his or her thoughts is not only a fool. I didn't call you a fool. Oh, no. Mm -mm. The Bible called you that. If God is not in your thoughts, the Bible calls you a fool. I didn't. So that person is not only a fool, but wicked and proud. Because God is in none of such a person's thoughts. And such a person denies the existence of God by their godless thoughts and living. Anyone who flatters himself or rests his eternal future on the good works they do instead of admitting their sinfulness and hating it is running this ruinous race too. 
everyone running in this race is headed for a disastrous finish unless the U turn and surrender to God. The ruinous race has to do with are you ready for this spiritual conversion? So if you have not been converted, spiritually speaking, in your heart, you are running a ruinous race and you are headed for a disastrous end. But that can change, all right? Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, 13. He who covers his sins or she who covers her sins will not prosper. I didn't say that. The God of the Bible said that. He said, you will not prosper if you keep covering your sin. That's, that's a curse, you see. But whoever confesses and forsakes them, we have mercy. It's a race that you can change by the placement of your faith on his grace. Let me say that again. It's a race you can change by the placement of your faith on his grace. Put your faith where God has put your sin upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Moving on. The rat race. Solomon started out as a young king whose main concern when praying to God was to have wisdom with which to lead the nation of Israel. Before long, God blesses every area of Solomon's life and Solomon goes into the overdrive and begins to compare we compete with himself and indirectly with the kings before him. He's trying to outdo himself by amassing wealth of all kinds. He got all kinds of, he amassed all kinds of um, uh, possessions that even, even amassed uh, apes. And because he went into a help's business, you see. It is Solomon's rat race that started his detestable view of life. Rat race, please listen, is not the daily grind of life, of getting a legal job, raising a family, cleaning your house, looking after your family, Taking your children to sport, that is not rat race. No. That's part of living. All right? Rat race, now listen please to the definition of rat race, is running after what fits your fancy, hoping it will increase your self-worth. That's where the trouble begins. Because you are trying to find yourself worth in things. When on a closer look, it will not really add any lasting value to yourself worth. Oh, I, I want people to see the kind of house I live in, the kind of car I drive, or the kind of job or position I I occupy at my workplace, listen, listen. You will not be the first person to be in that position. And you are not going to be the last person to occupy a big house. So calm down, all right? Go sit down at the back of the bus. That is not where your self-worth should be. Rat race may be in competition with oneself or against others. I've seen people competing against themselves. They want to outdo themselves. It's crazy. 
participating in the rat race is not necessarily influenced by your spiritual belief. No. A believer may be in the rat race while a pagan may not. Because if the pagan is, has more common sense than a believer, guess what? If a pagan knows his or herself what is not in things, it's not going to start running after it, you see. Of course, that doesn't mean that pagan is going to heaven. If the pagan knows how to use his or her common sense to evaluate his or her priorities, that pagan will not go into rat race with her. Oh no, it's not going to happen. A saved soul who fails to follow God's leading about their life's ambition desires or dreams will be running in the rat race even though he or she is on his way to heaven. So you can be a child of God and be acting and be living miserably running from pillar to post because you want to have all the wealth of this world to yourself. You want to kick Elon Musk out of the richest man's spot so you can be there. Then you are killing yourself to live, even though you are a child of God. This is why some believers do not enjoy the Christian life. It's not, it's not going to happen because the rat race is in stark contradiction to the daily simple Christian living to which believers have been called to live. We have been called to simple living. Daily simple living. The Bible says do not worry about what you will eat or drink. Sufficient enough is today's trouble. We have been called to live simply. Just enjoy the Lord Jesus Christ every day as you wake up. That's it. But if you as a child of God says, no, I want to can all I get and get all I can, help yourself to a life of misery. You'll be miserable. The rat race involvement has everything to do with natural contentment. Did you hear that? There's nothing to do about spirituality, natural contentment. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 29. Matthew eleven twenty-nine. 29. This is the Lord Jesus speaking to you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls if you don't allow the pride of life to be driving you. Daily simple living will be enough for you. And by so doing, you will find the rest. You will discover the rest in Christ Jesus. Your rest on earth is set in your rest, in his rest. Your rest on earth is set in your rest in his rest. Moving on. The rewarding race. Hallelujah. Anyone, let me say that again. Anybody can join this race, the rewarding race. Anybody can join, which is solely initiated by God and completely directed by the Holy Spirit of God. To join, though, please listen. You will have to agree to the divine assessment of your need of the Savior and that you are ready to abide by the divine demand to come to God by faith in Christ alone. To do so is to receive the free gift of salvation paid for with Christ's own blood, 
so you will not die eternally. However, the rewarding part of the race comes from your obedience to the word of God. I just said that a little, uh, a few minutes ago, that you can be a child of God, but not find rest in Christ if you fail to abide by his uh, command that we live simply every day, you see. There are earthly rewards if you obey the word of God, which come to us as we live out our Christianity daily. We have our heavenly rewards awaiting us and will be received when we get to heaven. Part of my daily rewards or Christian living rewards that I receive every day, honestly, I cannot begin to tell you. I tell people I have a very good life. I'm living a wonderful life and I'm not ready to change it for anything. Not anything in this world. You can enjoy the same thing. You see, if you surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ and you begin to live according to the word of God, God wants to bring heaven into your heart before he even takes you from this earth to heaven. That's it. While we have no way of knowing King Solomon's reward in heaven, nevertheless, we have records of the consequences of the races he ran. That is the rewards, the earthly rewards, if you will. Number one. Solomon found life miserable. Isn't that something? The kingdom he left behind became divided. The temple he built for God was eventually destroyed. Can you see? The southern kingdom, which is called Judah, which became the only jurisdiction of David's royal authority, was taken to Babylon in captivity because they ran a ruinous race and he ran a rat race. In all, everything that Solomon did was later reduced to nothing. Zippo. Having played the fool, for a period of time in his life. Solomon repented, he did repent when he became old and turned back to God and later gave us the summary of how to run a rewarding race. And we're gonna get to that in a few seconds. The rewarding race has to do with continual compliance. If you want to run a rewarding race, you have to be in continual compliance every day with the word of God. Which means, if you are saved yesterday, you will still be saved even right now. So there's nothing like, oh, she was saved last week, then she lost her salvation. No, she was never saved. If you are truly saved, you, are, you will still be saved even as you speak. At the moment you are talking, continual compliance, you see. Let's now see how Solomon concluded how to run a rewarding race. Ecclesiastes, I love this. Chapter 12, verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the all matter. Fear God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. In other words, this is the totality of your life. The A to Z of your life. This is how your life can be lived pleasantly. That's what he's saying. To live for his advocacy is to build your legacy. 
Josephine Zion. That is so beautiful. Say that again. To live for his advocacy is to build your legacy. What have we done so far? What are the races run by humans? It is number one, the ruinous race. That is to continually live according to your own beliefs instead of God's uh, beliefs as laid out in the word of God. The rat race, that is killing yourself to live in competition with yourself or against the others, other people, catching up with the Joneses. The rewarding race, living daily by biblical principles, which brings earthly rewards and also stacks up heavenly rewards. The foundation text talks about the rest that Christ gives, that is, he bestows that, and the rest that is found in Christ Jesus, that is, you discover that. This is determined by the race you are running. Which race or races are you running? Huh? Because you are running a race or races. You can run a minimum of one. And you can be involved in maximum of two races. But it's impossible to run the three races. No. So you are running one or two races. Which one are you running? Are you saved? but running for the top of the ladder or comparing your life to others. So much so the Christian life has become powerless and boring for you. Ah, uh, sister, brother, is that your problem? Repent to discover the rest in Christ, which is the simple Christian living. It is the best and the most exciting living, hallelujah, in the world. I can testify. Anything different is on you, not on God, oh no, and it is not on God's word. The Bible works. The word of God works if you obey. Are you a pagan? Running your own life as you see fit. You are traveling on a useless life journey. I hate to tell you that. And headed for a nothingness finish. You're going to a zippo end. That's a sad way to travel life. But it doesn't have to be like that. This is because whatever you may call your legacy, will be surpassed one day and will eventually be wiped out years later. Then your soul will end in hell when you die. However, Christ can bestow eternal rest on you if you are ready to receive it. Do you want it? Huh? You should. Why wouldn't you? You want to end up a zippo? Huh? No. God doesn't want that for you. Are you saved and enjoying the discovered rest in Christ Jesus? Don't be a wicked and lazy servant. Spread the good news to those still in the mire of sin and the grip of Satan. Don't just, don't hold it to yourself. No. The Bible says, all oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That is telling other people. The more souls you reach for Christ, the more your rewards, both on earth and in heaven. If you desire, desire to change the course of your life after listening to this message, 
a link will be coming up. You don't have to travel life miserably a second longer. No. And you don't have to end up a zippo in the afterlife. So a link will be showing as I'm talking. Follow that link to change the course of your life. It's never too late. Father God, thank you for the way of escape through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, upon us, all your children who have already believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, let your peace continue to abide and give us the grace to declare your salvation in our generation. And for those going to want to know Jesus page, Father, open their eyes and accept them as your children, even as they cry out to you in the name of Jesus. And if there be anyone after listening to this message and they are still defiant, Father, we pray that you accompany such people with restlessness until they come to rest in thee. For in Jesus' name, I will be prayed. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only if the Lord Jesus has not split the sky open.
Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good news reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry, 